What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. This episode, we are on the Chevelle again. Last week, we did the radiator and all that jazz, so that's all set up. So now we're going to be doing some end tanks for our vibrant intercooler core. We went with the bigger intercooler. If you guys didn't see this episode, to get caught up, go ahead and hit the link in the description below. You can see how I get to this point. So for right now, what we have to do is make some end tanks. And with end tanks, I usually make it out of eighth inch aluminum. It holds the boost really well. It's easy to shape. I know exactly where I need my inlets to be for the actual charge pipes. From here, I'm going to actually make two separate end tanks. I'm gonna make that first. So let's get some cardboard cut up, start shaping these guys in. So we're gonna do this a little old school. I know we got like scanners and we can design everything on CAD, but I'm gonna show you guys how to do it in your garage. We have our center line here. I cut up some strips of cardboard, flatter, nicer cardboard. Don't get cardboard that's all like janky. I don't like that one. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with my four x four end plate that's actually going to accept the Vibrant HD ferrule. So this HD flange is four inches across. So I'm probably gonna do like four and a quarter and four and a quarter, just like a square. And that's what this will eventually weld onto. Pretty much what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find my landings first for these guys. So one right here and one right here. I'm gonna start with the backside and then figure out a way to close out the face. Our cardboard end tanks are done. And as you can see from the time lapse, I was cutting two pieces at a time. Once I confirmed that this one cleared the hood by like four inches or so, I just started cutting them in twos because obviously it's all symmetrical. These will actually double as cutting templates, guys. Usually I'll try to take them off in one piece and then break them apart carefully, mark each one onto a piece of aluminum, cut, and then just basically remake what you see here out of eighth inch aluminum. It's just made a lot quicker and easier to do that than I'm measure every single one of these and draw them out on AutoCAD and try to cut them on the plasma table. Plus you guys don't have a plasma table at your house. So we're gonna go from aluminum to titanium. So we're gonna tack weld our aluminum side onto our end tank. So this will stay put. And then we're gonna remake this pipe here. Let's start cutting up some aluminum and getting these end tanks tacked up so we can get on the next step, which is making our charge piping. So we have both of our plenums cut and it looks just like a mess right now. So we know this is a four and a half by 11 inch plenum. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna outline a four and a half by 11 inch box. When you lift this up to a box and you square off the ends, it starts to come together. So we got our end tank pretty much where I want them before we can start welding. These are gonna need a little bit of love to fill in these gaps. Since we're gonna send that intercooler back, cause it's got a little dent in it, thanks to Mr. UPS, I have this old drop intercooler core that was just kind of sitting over in the corner. I'm gonna go ahead and throw this on there like this. I'm gonna weld four big fat tacks on each corner and that's gonna help this thing keep its shape. And also it's going to help with cooling as far as when we're welding it. It's not going to allow this to get completely heat soaked. This aluminum block underneath that's going to get hot as well. So it's going to dispense the heat out of the part and not allow it to get like so stinking cooked that this thing will actually warp. We're going to weld the outside first and then I'm going to figure out what I'm going to do about inside of here. There's some gaps that we need to fill and then we'll go ahead and weld the inside. If you don't weld the inside, you blend all this down, it'll just crack, it'll just separate. So the inside weld is where your strength comes from, and the outside weld is more for like show. We're gonna repeat the process on this guy. We're gonna cut this end off. You can see how much we actually took off of this end to bring it in. So our V is actually a lot deeper now than it was before. So we're gonna go ahead and start on this one after we get the inside of this all set, and then these end tanks should be all done. All 
All right, so our end tanks are done and they are taped in instead of welded, obviously because we still have to wait for our new core to come in. Our upper charge pipes are good to go. We got to put some blow off valves on there eventually, but for right now I'm gonna leave that put. So the next step is going to be the cold side on the turbos, running the charge pipes from the two and a half inch into the lower half of the intercooler. In order to do that, I need to have the turbos exactly where I want them. And right now, these are going to be backwards. So I gotta put this side on that side and that one on this side because I want the outlet on the cold side of the turbo to be on this side of the frame rail. That way I can punch a hole through here, come through and go on the back side of this guy. So we're gonna go ahead and pull these out now, switch them over, make some new brackets to be able to put them in position. So we got our turbos flipped. As you can see, the exhaust side is now shooting this way. So I'm gonna be able to go do a little 90 jog, go into a collector, and then the header is gonna shoot kind of down and into there. And that's actually gonna give me a good placement for the wastegate up here, and I'm gonna reuse that hole for the wastegate screamer pipe. We probably just vent to atmosphere on that bad boy. So now that the turbos are where they need to be, they ended up working out really well how they're on like kind of a 45 degree angle. So it's just gonna come out 90 into that wall right there and go into the plenum. We don't have the replacement intercooler yet, so this one's still kind of being held up by the bar. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw the grill back on real quick and then we'll start laying out our end tank for the lower part of this intercooler. And hopefully UPS sends us an intercooler and they don't drop it on the ground first. So the grill is showing that there's really not a whole lot of room towards the outside. I think I'll be better off inside where this peak is and then coming across the front here with the intercooler piping. Yes, it blocks off a little bit of the flow, but there's a ton of surface area that we're not really gonna be obstructing. So I think it's gonna be okay. So we're gonna go ahead and start cutting up some material and start shaping some metal around our dimension so that once the new core comes in, we can actually start mocking it all up and seeing how it fits. So we have our little landings welded on here. This is where our actual HD clamp is going to weld to. So I moved them in a little bit because I don't want to go all the way to the inside. We are just on the edge of the grill right here. So this is as far back this way as I can go. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a transition from here. It's going to come straight off of this edge and then roll over and go flat to here. And then we'll close in the sides from this far corner. When the air comes in, you don't want sharpness on this transition. So I'm just gonna help the air come in and, and make this transition. I'm gonna use that intercooler drop that we were using before to keep the shape while we're cutting and welding. Air's coming in, it's gonna do a 180, charge into the intercooler. This is gonna go right here on the inside, like that. So we have enough room on our grill. We'll be able to put our HD clamp right on that landing right there. Now that we have one done, it's gonna be a lot easier to template all these pieces out and then transfer it over to our passenger side. We got our passenger side all welded up. We got the inside all welded as well. That'll get blended down a little bit later. This one I noticed is a little bit higher. So what we're gonna probably end up doing is taking a little bit of height out of the whole thing. We'll just make a mark around it. Probably a quarter inch out of the whole thing is probably what we're gonna need to do. 
And then what I was gonna probably end up doing is make some sort of brace to be able to hold these together. Cause we do wanna separate the left and right banks. Instead of making one big one that goes all the way across, that's gonna create turbulence. You wanna keep your right and left turbo systems separate. You have your boost coming in and it's gonna be going on this side for the, for the right, for the driver's side. And then it's gonna go into this side on the passenger side. If I made one giant box across, when the boost at pressure comes in on either side on the turbos, it's going in one big chamber and it's gonna cause a little bit of turbulence. So we're gonna to try to keep that separate so that everything is flowing real nice. All right, so our little modification worked. We're now pretty much even all throughout. I have to put this lid back on underneath the fastener side and these things are pretty much all set. I was going to do a cold weld on these leading edges. I think I'm still gonna do that because it's gonna add a little more extra strength and allow the boost pressure on the bottom half of the intercooler to be able to resist the chances of these edges cracking. Plus it's gonna give it a little bit more of a racy look. So we're gonna go ahead and weld this in now, cold weld all this. Well, let's see if UPS decided to give us another surprise on our vibrant intercooler floor. A new one just showed up, guys. And it looks like, it looks like it's good. We're gonna weld our end tanks on now, get this all sorted out and start making our brackets on the side and get the cooling system completely done before we go on to the next step, which is gonna be making our charge pipes for our turbos and some headers. So we have our upper end tanks pretty much done. Before I weld the lower end tanks on, I want to leave the bottom completely open so that I have somewhere that I can mount the intercooler to. So we're gonna pull the dented one out now, put the new one in rather, hook up our charge pipes on the top, get our measurements all right, and then figure out how we're gonna get this to mount on the sides. Then we can get rid of this one by one tubing that's right here, weld our end tanks back on, and the cooling system is just about done. All right, so our lower end tanks are welded on. We have our HD fittings also welded in place. I went ahead and I had to come off the landing a little bit. These HD clamps have a little bit of a bump out for the pin. So I just came off this a hair just so that this thing would be able to rotate on there, have no problems. Charge piping is gonna come right across the front here and go right into the inside of the car. So I still have to do a center piece here to lock this all in, weld that all together. We have our lower bracket, upper bracket, it's all welded up. Everything's looking really good. I'm really liking how this is turning out. What we're going to do now is I'm just gonna clean up a little of these welds, do a little more prep work. And we're gonna throw this thing in and see what it looks like. Everything is mounted, all the brackets are made, guys, and it's looking like the charge piping's gonna clear really nice behind the grill. This pointed front end of the Chevelle is really what dictated a lot as to where the inlets are gonna go on this setup. I really wanted to go on the outside here, but the, the bumper's just in the way. So we're just gonna leave it like that for now. Everything is pretty much where it needs to be. So now we really know exactly where the turbo placement is gonna work. I think this is gonna be good. I might clock this up a little bit more in the next episode, but that's it for this episode, guys. On the next episode, we're going to be doing the charge piping. We're gonna be finishing out the cold side, and we're gonna be starting on the exhaust and the headers and the downpipes. Thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing. We'll see you guys next time. So these are both nice and symmetrical, symmetrical, symmetrical.